It's time for your weekly fix of wrestling nostalgia. When we look at wrestling's past eras, from the Attitude Era, to the Reality Era. I'd like to think that maybe this company will be better after Vince McMahon's dead, but the fact is, it's it's going to get taken over by his idiotic daughter and his doofus son-in-law and the rest of his stupid family. To today. Here on the WWE Podcast. Welcome to the WWE Podcast on this Wednesday, November 6th, 2019. It's Wrestling Nostalgia Day, or Wrestling Nostalgia Night, or morning, depending on when you're listening to this. And uh, today is a... I, I, one of my most favorite moments in the last decade in WWE, and uh, I actually didn't get to experience it firsthand, and uh, actually was ruined via social media, and I'm, I'll get to that story um, of, of exactly how that happened, and that moment, of course, being The Rock's return on Valentine's Day 2011 in Anaheim, California, being the host of WrestleMania 27 that uh, led into a year-long program with John Cena, Actually, a almost a two-year program as uh, The Rock went over at WrestleMania 28 and lost at WrestleMania 29, doing the favors to John Cena uh, for the championship, the WWE Championship. So a, a really fun run for The Rock uh, back from 2011 to 2013 uh, in WWE. And uh, yeah, we've seen him compete in those kind of matches, right, with Eric Rowan that he had, which was a six-second match. Um, and, and, you know, those occasional appearances, like we, he appeared in Brooklyn a few years ago and, uh, gave Rusev the people's elbow and, uh, and then on recently, most recently showed up on the debut of SmackDown on Fox to rock bottom King Corbin. So the rock is not ever gone as you'll listen to in his promo, but he's very much a, um, an afterthought in today's world of WWE, but you know what? That's. That's the cycle of the business, and I'm not complaining because I think The Rock had one of the best runs ever in the history of professional wrestling, regardless of promotion. The Rock was just that good. Um, He was my number two to my number one of Stone Cold. And so, again, we'll get into all of that. And like I said, a personal story coming up, which ruined the moment of this, so I never got to see this in a real-time format. Again, this is, remember, this predates Hulu and uh, the, the streaming option of Netflix that became mainstream. Um, and so when you, you had social media, that was really your source for getting information, as it is today, and even more so today, but uh, unfortunately it was spoiled via social media. So, uh, guys, thank you again for joining me on, uh, on this November 6th, as Election Day has come and gone, and um, next year sh- should be even more chaotic with the pres- presidential election. Um, but first of all, um, guys, head on over to Patreon.com, and the reason I'm, I'm asking you to do that is I've modified and added a lot of different benefits to different tier levels, including things like giving a follow back on Twitter, um, giving a shout out on Twitter, giving a shout out on a, a via video on uh, on Twitter. Um, lots of cool things. You, you, as I said, you know, um, there are there's a tier that's available where you can come on and co-host a show um, and that's a pretty cool deal. And you know, we, I'm having one of my patrons on this coming Saturday to discuss, um, a topic of his choice, Sean Harford. So it's going to be a, a blast and I'm really looking forward to that. But, uh, all the tiers come with completely ad free experience. So if you are one of those people that likes to skip through the ads or gets annoyed by the ads or, or whatever it may be, you can have a completely streamlined listening experience by going heading on over to patreon.com and seeing what, uh, we have to offer. Um, there'll be a lot more added there down the line, including a hits and misses column that, uh, I'm going to be working on putting together and that will be done on a weekly basis as, uh, as we look at closing out 2019 and bringing in 2020, which is just around the corner. Um, but I'm going to be ramping up things that I do on Patreon and adding more value for members and, uh, and hopefully you guys will join the team. I think it's, I think it's a, 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 um, well worth the, uh, the, the dollar value, and I hope that you're getting what you need. And if there's things that you guys may want, whether you're an existing patron or not, let me know. 
I, I really want to make sure that you feel like you're getting the most value that you can. Um, so also, if you want to know how to get there, you can either head on over to patreon.com slash WWE podcast, or you can just head over to the website, which is WWE podcast.com and then click on support the show. And I have a little link right there. That's a become a patron. It's a, it's a button right on that tab. So, alrighty. Well, guys, as always, thank you again. And, um, let me just preface this whole rock, uh, return in 2011 with my personal experience of how this all got ruined. So it's Valentine's Day, right? It's Valentine's Day. You're taking your significant other out to dinner. Um, I was dating a girl at the time that um, ended up giving me the shaft, but that's neither here nor there. So this this uh, loss of living this in real time wasn't even worth the price of admission, if that makes sense. But uh, So I had this girl. We'll leave her nameless. Um, back in 2011, I had her out for dinner on Valentine's Day, being a good boyfriend. And, uh, I'm out and, um, you know, I'm trying to keep tabs on raw. It's getting late in the evening as dinners run late on Valentine's day, spending, uh, you know, an arm and a leg on those, oh, you know, a a Valentine's day dinner, you know, $90 a plate. And, you know, you get like a roll and you get an appetizer, all this, you know, stuff that's completely overpriced and really there just to say that you took somebody out to dinner. And, um, so I'm trying to keep up and try to look at my phone and she's, Say, hey, you know, keep your phone. You don't need to look at your phone. We're on a date. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So um, I glance at my phone, and it's, I, I don't know, it was, it was later in the evening. And uh, lo and behold, I glance down at my phone um, as we're looking at, or, or we're having dinner, and I see that The Rock returned to, to Raw. I think somebody put it on, a, on Facebook or, or or one of the social media platforms, and I'm sitting there going, no, Right? Because that's not something you want to see on social media. It's something you want to experience as it happened. That's why I vehemently try to avoid any kind of social media, the, um, even now. Because I don't watch Raw live. I watch Raw and delay. And uh, same with SmackDown. So it's very, very difficult to avoid the, uh, the, the, the messages people get about wanting to know what I think about what just happened and avoiding other people's posts. It's not an easy deal. It's difficult. And so this was one that really spoiled it for me, um, really made me um, a little bit annoyed. And um, I tried to compose myself as a you know mature, how old was I? Seven years ago. Wait, no, 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 no. It's 2011, so get my head on straight. Eight years ago, almost nine. So I was 26 years old. And uh, so trying to be a mature adult and uh, not let that ruin the rest of my night. Um, so... I mean, I don't know. If you're interested about the dinner, I think it was good. The rest of it, all I remember is, I'm not kidding you, for two people paying like 120 bucks, <laughs> it killed me um, at some fancy place that uh, I'll never go again. And um, anyway, so that was my ruined experience. So, I, you know, I get home and um, I was able to watch Raw uh, as I taped it on my DVR. We all remember when DVR was actually a thing and it was cool to have DVR. Well, I had a DVR box in my house and uh, Raw was recording. So I was able to watch Raw, of course, after that. And uh, let, let me just say this. I mean, this the build-up to this, if I recall, WWE had said there, that the announcement will be made for the host of WrestleMania 27 on this Monday Night Raw. And I don't think anybody at the time, and I know I didn't suspect it, that it was going to be The Rock. Um, and I think gauging by the crowd's reaction, I don't think they did either. WWE even um, steered people the complete opposite way by, you know, announcing that it uh, a limo pulled up and it could be the host of WrestleMania 27, and a female's legs were taped walking out of the limo, um, really just to throw people off the scent of maybe thinking it could be the Rock at all. I mean, like really, really laying it on thick and 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 driving people away from any kind of thought and you didn't hear any chance for you know rocky rocky people had no idea the majority of people had no idea there was going to be the rock and um those kinds of surprises are so few and far between and especially in today's digital age and um people that are employed by wwe that are quote leaks to the wrestling community and that are basically inside informants (laughs) <laughs> to uh, major websites. We all know who those are. And so with all of that and, and social media at our fingertips and um, 
especially at the wrestler's fingertips, everything is, is difficult to conceal. And this was concealed in a way that had everybody fooled. And I loved it. I mean, after seven years, did anybody really expect The Rock to be the one to come out? I didn't. That probably was in the top three rock reactions I've ever heard. And yes, don't worry. Audio is coming. Audio is forthcoming. I'm going to give that to you in just a second. Um, so we had uh, we had the announcement of The Rock. He comes out. Crowd loses their minds. And well, just take a listen. And then we'll uh, we'll reconvene. And I want to get into his promo that he cut, too, which was just absolutely stellar. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the host of WrestleMania 27. So you guys can hear that. I mean, it's a little bit uh, distorted through the microphone. However, I I mean, the the people exploded. The people absolutely lost their minds. And you know what? I mean, I I did, too, even even after I knew that he was there because of my complete blown um, social media check. But it was still awesome to see. And after seven years, seven years, The Rock has not done a thing in WWE in terms of inside the ring. And I believe the one before that, if you guys remember, was when he came to defend Eugene against the coach. And when he um, he came and it was like the uh, the superhero to Eugene um, and came back and called the coach a popcorn fart and ended up giving him a rock bottom in people's elbow. And that was, I think, the last that we saw of The Rock. And he went on, made his millions, made his movies, came, uh, came back. And the fans really, really, really embraced him and and, uh, took him back. And (laughs) it it was an amazing reaction. Amazing. And um, I think that a lot of that credit goes to it being a secret, which, again, is almost an impossibility in 2019 and will continue to be harder and harder and harder. Uh, So uh, The Rock comes back and I I won't give you the entire promo because half the half the podcast would be a uh, just you guys listening to The Rock. But. Um, the beginning of his promo, he talks about how it's been seven long years and he's finally back home and um, talks about how many nicknames he has, the people's champion, the great one, all that kind of stuff. And then talks as Dwayne and says that, you know, I'm not back for the money. I'm not here to to uh, to promote a movie. I'm here because of all of you. And then uh, goes back into rock form. Um, and it's it's just a such a great promo, such a. This was Rock being Rock, and you knew that with him as the host of WrestleMania, you knew somehow, some way, somebody's getting a rock bottom. And as The Rock alludes to, the question is, who? The Rock is going to WrestleMania. The Rock will host WrestleMania. And at the drop of a dime, The Rock will lay up the smack down at WrestleMania. To 
That's the question. Could it be the WWE Champion, The Miz? He's the one that goes around saying, I'm The Miz and I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I hear that all the time. I'm awesome. Well, The Rock ain't no scientist, but he pretty much knows that there's one formula that's a fact. If you got to run around, shoot your mouth off, telling everybody how awesome you are, it means you absolutely, undoubtedly, unquestionably, 100% completely suck. So uh, taking a pause here, The Rock alluding to and going through the list of people in which, you know, he may lay the smack down to. And The Miz, as you remember, was WWE champion at that time. And take nothing away from The Miz, but at that point in his career, he had no business being WWE champion. He just didn't. Um, and that shows you the depth of the roster at this time. Remember, there's no NXT there's, there are no territories. There's no developmental. You have OVW, and you have TNA, all right? And you have New Japan. You have Ring of Honor. You have Independence. There's no NXT. It doesn't exist. So think about that. Um, I know that NXT is not viewed as a developmental territory anymore, but back then, they would have died to have a farm system like NXT, which was its original intended purpose. To develop talent, create a performance center to simulate the big, you know, the big time shows. And when you're on the roster full time and you're up to the main roster and it was Triple H's vision. So, um, again, that just shows you the, the really the lack of depth of talent at this time with The Miz. And uh, again, I, he, he can talk, but man, he had he had no business being WWE champion at this point. And if, he had, if he was WWE champion in 2019, I think people would be a little bit more um a little more accepting of that because The Miz has really proven himself in front of the audience over the last 10 years, really um, made strides in his matches, his promos, um, just as a character. So um, the, the Rock begins to go through the list and you hear people screaming John Cena's name and the, the promo just, just gets funnier from here. But there's one more man. Who The Rock wants to see. There's one more man who The Rock is going to see. And that man Oh my gosh, you guys remember this? You guys remember the anonymous Raw GM? The anonymous Raw GM that was never actually identified until they just realized, oh, we should probably figure out or or tie up that loose end, you know, five years later and it ended up being Hornswoggle under the ring with a computer. I mean, it was just one of the worst ideas WWE has ever had because they felt the need to have a general manager. Um, the, The incessant need that the show can't go on without some kind of general manager. We don't know who we want that to be, so it's just going to be somebody anonymous. Um, no face because we don't have one to put there. It's just going to be anonymous and it'll just put heat on Michael Cole, who's not a wrestler or a performer. And, um, it it was one of the most annoying, um, illogical because not only is it illogical, but all you have to do is just close the computer, right? Just, Just close the computer. And furthermore, how is a a email service tied to the lights of the building. And the reason I say that is, I, I know you guys are hearing audio, not visual here, but when the, when, when the uh, email came through, as the, the dings went, or the dings happened, the do 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 the lights in the arena went in concert with that, um, with that notification so- uh, sound. And so I just don't know how that's even possible. How is that a thing? 
It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Um, but it's just completely illogical. So anyway, uh, moving down the line here, um, let's continue with the promo from The Rock. Whoa, 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 whoa. Michael Cole, if you take one more step towards that computer, The Rock will get out of here and slap the taste so far out of your mouth, you'll never get it back. Shut up. Michael Cole, do you actually think that The Rock is just going to let you walk over to that computer and interrupt him when he is live on Raw? Is that what you think? Do you actually think that any of us give a damn what your general manager has to say? Is that what you think? I'll tell you what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. So The Rock continues here with his uh, his shtick and his you know his bit. And Michael Cole plays the heel well. Michael Cole is still just generally unlikable, isn't he? Michael Cole, for all the contributions he's made to the wrestling industry. Uh, and, and how long he's been. He's been with the WWE since 1997. People forget that. And how many times The Rock... I remember when The Rock would uh, make fun of Michael Cole, or, and he'd make fun of Kevin Kelly and call him a hermaphrodite, and, and um, you know, generally treat the announcers like crap, but Michael Cole was the perfect foil for that. He was generally extremely unlikable. And even in 2019, I mean, he just has something naturally about him that you dislike. And I'm not knocking his ability... When he's not on commentary, you feel it. He knows how to steer the ship. Michael Cole, I don't think, gets the credit he deserves. Navigating a system in 2019 that is not what was what it was like for Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler navigating commentary in 1998, 1999, 2000, 2001. There is a whole boatload more of things that announcers need to do other than just worry about what's in front of them in the ring. And that's actually unfortunate because that should be their main concern. But now you have the announcers having to navigate social media and sponsor plugs and oh, we're going to commercial break, uh, but we're going to do it in the end of a match. So, hey, have your uh, your closeout comments before we go to commercial, which is we all know it. Can so and so get back in this match as Raw rolls on? I mean, that's just what you say. Um, and there's a lot more in terms of what needs to be done. And you also have a three man booth now which I'm not a fan of, but WWE just feels the absolute need to make it a three-man booth. I think it's a little crowded. Two is fine. Um, three, two is a, what is it? What's, what, two is a, uh, three is a crowd. I don't know what two is. I forget the expression, but that's what it is. I just still feel that way. So anyway, Michael Cole gets uh, laid out by The Rock in terms of verbally, and we have the terrible Raw general manager program going on. And uh, so let's continue with the uh, with the promo here. and you don't say a word and I quote you know your damn role and shut your damn mouth because if you don't The Rock will have some pretty cool Facebook pictures to post on his Facebook tonight does anyone here want to contribute Dwayne Johnson, if Michael Cole doesn't do as The Rock says, you're going to get a beautiful picture of The Rock stepping out of this ring, going over to that computer. Some of you may know where I'm going with this. The picture you're going to get is The Rock shining it up real nice. Turning that some bit sideways and sticking it straight up Michael Cole's candy yeah. ass. 
I mean, th- this is uh, The Rock, really, it's The Rock's greatest hits right now. The Rock is just uh, laying into Cole. It's it's a good foil for him. Cole, again, is just inherently unlikable. Um, and so he comes out with his lines, and, and uh, The Rock is The Rock. And, and it feels like he hasn't missed a step. The Rock is just being who he was and uh, the 2011 version of it. And uh, I, I was I was enjoying it. The crowd was eating it up. They couldn't get enough. And, uh, well, let, let's continue a little bit along here. to see face to face a guy who I met a guy who I thought was a cool guy wished him well happy for his success when the rock leaves he comes in and out of the blue eventually he starts talking trash about the rock I don't know why and I don't care but I'm back now You might have heard of him. His name is John Cena. So The Rock mentions John Cena, of which, uh, you know, the majority of the crowd expects. um, And again, Michael Cole sitting there like with a a, a, just a a sour puss on his face. But um, now we're getting into the meat of this. We're getting into the meat of a, a year set up for a match, which, hey, I'm all for. I am all for it. I don't need to see it every year. But it is certainly unique, and the challenge that Cena and Rock had throughout the year to continue this build um, to the f- actual match that happened at WrestleMania 28, which obviously wasn't challenged in official until the night after WrestleMania of 20 after WrestleMania 27, but this was something that had never been done before, which is what The Rock was alluding to at the beginning of his promo. That no one has ever done this before, having a challenge a year out. And I loved it. I thought that was brilliant. And people were saying, how are they going to continue the build for a year? I mean, people are going to get bored. I never got bored. I never got bored. I, I really didn't. And um, th- was the match ever going to live up to the impossible standards? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. You, How can you possibly have a match built for a year? And have it on a traje- trajectory that would actually have it get more and more intense week by week. You can't. It, the, the answer is it's impossible. The limit, the limit does not exist is the answer. And the, the key was, and the formula was over that year, was <clears throat> having The Rock and Cena remind you every few weeks, every month or two of what's happening and having back and forth promos and maybe via satellite, all that kind of stuff. It didn't need to be done every week because you have a lot of time to build this and just heat it up towards the end of the year, which they did. And they teamed at Survivor Series against The Miz and R-Truth. And um, it eventually built to a WrestleMania match. Um, And so, well, let's continue because this is where the the promo really gets funny. And um, the meat of the whole the whole conversation is right here. Stevie Wonder can see your monkey ass. 
I mean, this is just uh, brilliant stuff by The Rock. I mean, I was popping like crazy um, saying he's playing peekaboo, and uh, it's so true, though. I mean, like, there, there, is, there is so much truth to that segment of the promo right there and the feeling among fans that he was able to really um, dictate right there about how we've gone from Austin 316 – from beer swilling, finger gesturing, whoop your ass in your face, um, no limits, unpredictable, stone cold, to The Rock carrying the helm, um, although they kind of did it in tandem. It wasn't as if Austin carried the torch, but th- the message is that it goes from that, the believability, unpredictability, edgy, to John Cena, and it's just, it was such a stark contrast. And yes, the, the PG era began in 2008 and John Cena was at the helm of that. Um, and so it was just, it, it, it was so true and it was so awesome to see The Rock bring that up, that it was such a stark contrast from basically a uh, an older demographic product to younger audience and the, the crowds, you know, um, feeling for that and what the rock represented what austin represented were a much different era and i understand that the the business has to evolve i understand why they went pg i might have too i'm not saying blood and guts and gore would would uh in tv 14 would pop the ratings i i I don't believe it would i mean it might hot shot it and you might get people interested for a couple of weeks but strong sponsors would drop out it would be a fiscal disaster among a pr disaster for for raw or for wwe so i don't fault them for it but it is hilarious that he brought it up about how you know we went from these two guys that were an iconic part of wwe and were are the foundation of wwe of its you know biggest boom ever in the 90s for the attitude era to this soft you can't see me um you know pandering john cena that was the face of the wwe and it's also a bit ironic that now John Cena for everything he said against The Rock from for these couple of years during their uh, their two match program was it now is something that he is exactly doing. He is MIA from WWE. Mr. MIA from WWE and goes on Ellen DeGeneres and says, "Well, I don't know if you you know this, but I fake fight people for a living." John Cena just can't help himself. I I I don't need to hear that. It, I mean, for you to disparage your own work and the actual tears and sweat and blood and sacrifice that you've made to just boil it down to you fake fight people um, as a wrestling fan. God, I hate hearing that crap. It's not that I'm delusional. I totally understand what pro wrestling is, but when you hear the wrestlers off camera, and particularly when they are trying to remove themselves from the day-to-day product that is WWE and step their foot into other genres of entertainment like movies, they like to distance themselves and really reflect what the general population that doesn't like or doesn't know wrestling and just go along with that stereotype that I fake fight people. It, it's so demeaning and it's um, it's something that I think really undermines his own career and undermines the careers and product of WWE itself. And again, you can have people say to me, you can have people from the company say, you, well, everyone knows it's not real. So what's the big deal? The big deal is we all know it's not real, but we don't talk about how not real it is. Do you talk about how not real movies are that you like or not real that TV shows that you like are? No, you don't. And you particularly don't want to hear from actors that uh, it's all fake. No, I already know that. I know that what you did in the movie didn't actually happen. And I know that you were portraying a character, even if it's based on a true story, that you were portraying a character in which this actually happened to. But I don't need you to come out and go on some talk show and say how you know that I I, I, I just act, which means I, I don't really, you know, what I'm doing isn't real. That's what I do for a living. I just pretend I'm doing stuff for a living. 
it's such a uh I don't even know the words for it. There's some some words that I just don't have the knowledge for that that's what this is. I, I know I dislike it and I hate it. I hate seeing it. So anyway, I don't know how I got on that tangent. But um again, it, it was great that The Rock made that comparison because I had been thinking that forever, as many fans from the Attitude Era had. So um let's continue on with the promo and um I have some more thoughts. How the hell you think we can miss? You come out here with your bright ass purple shirt and before that your bright green shirt before that your bright orange shirt you run around here looking like a big fat bowl of fruity pebbles The Rock will see you at WrestleMania. Just like The Rock will see The Miz at WrestleMania. Everyone at WrestleMania, and just as sure as The Rock, just as sure as The Rock turns WrestleMania into the most epic WrestleMania of all time, and just as sure as anything can and will happen at WrestleMania, and just as sure as every day John Cena walks out here looking like he just got shot out of Barney the Dinosaur's anus, is just, is just as sure as The Rock guarantees three things at this WrestleMania. The Rock guarantees to show the world that he is the most electrifying man in all of entertainment. The Rock Garen Dan Tees at the drop of a dime, just like that, to lay up the smack it down on all their candy asses. And the last thing and most important, The Rock and the millions. No, 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 that's not good enough. No, 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 no. The Rock and the Good enough. The Rock is the people's champ. You are the backbone of The Rock. When we speak, our voices are heard. We all say, I bring it. Anaheim, the world is watching. Anaheim, the world is listening. One more time. When The Rock and the millions of The Rock's fans go to WrestleMania and electrify WrestleMania and the world like no one else can. If yes, a man. So we got to uh, the, the end of that promo there. And uh, look, this, <laughs> as far as promo battles go, this may have been The Rock's night. The best night for The Rock was probably his first night. Um, as I said, I loved, I actually really enjoyed the build to this match. And I think John Cena is clearly the victor when it comes to um, quick wit, actual promo battles. And we all remember The Rock having to write his promo on his arm and then John Cena making fun of it the next week. We all remember that. I remember that. That, that was uh, not a good look for The Rock. Um, and this was a well-rehearsed, um, albeit probably some off-the-cuff promo from The Rock. As John Cena came out and said the next week, he came out snorting. He came out spitting. He was the Brahma Bull. And he felt like The Rock of old and hadn't missed a step. And I, I you know, this obviously still benefited John Cena. As we remember, Fruity Pebbles post or was it General Mills Post, I think, is the one that does uh, the uh, Fruity Pebble cereal, Im- immediately came to WWE and said, we want John Cena. And he, they got him a, uh, a, a deal with uh, a commercial for Fruity Pebbles and ended up making him probably a hefty paycheck, just by The Rock's words. I mean, it's amazing um, the, the power of words sometimes. So, the, you know, again, I thought The Rock would come in and smoke John Cena in terms of promo. He didn't. He didn't. He did some things via satellite, and then John Cena said, "The you know, I bring it, and his shirt said via satellite. Uh, there, there was a lot of stuff that John Cena just simply got the best of The Rock. John Cena just, 
I hate to admit it, but John Cena is the master on the mic. And when it comes to quick wit and true promo skills, as I said, I have to begrudgingly admit that John Cena is just flat out better. He is. And uh, maybe my nostalgia was getting the best of me, thinking The Rock could smoke John Cena. And it, indeed, it actually turned out to be the opposite. And you know, The Rock got some good jabs in there. But in general, John Cena is just a, a just master on the microphone. Um, and he proves it every single time he's out there. That's the one thing that he is... That John, that John Cena has better, even more than his in-ring skills, which at times felt robotic, and you know he isn't the smoothest guy in the ring, and you know, but hey, he's he's a powerhouse, but he's also a silver-tongued devil on the microphone. I mean, he could talk ice, and you know, what is it, the old saying? Um, he could talk an Eskimo into buying ice, and he really could. So, um, yeah, again, this rivalry lasted for two years. Their first match, we all know the outcome. The second match, we all know the outcome with The Rock dropping the belt to John Cena at WrestleMania 29 and doing the favors. And The Rock ended up tearing his hamstring and not appearing on Raw the next night, which, I mean, that was a whole thing um, that I remember being reported all over the websites that, oh, my God, The Rock just left the building. He didn't notify anybody, but he was actually injured. And so, um, well, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I, you know, I, I'm trying not to get too caught up in a moving forward on actually touching on the rock, rock bottoming John Cena at WrestleMania 27 and then their match at WrestleMania 28 and their follow up match at WrestleMania 29. Um, this is something that, you know, to me is. is cool to see. It's really cool to see. And it feels like so long ago. And I remember actually traveling with this same girlfriend. Yeah. The same girlfriend, uh, boy, it's amazing when you look back and go, you know, what in the F was I doing, right? You, you, you just look back and it, it's all so clear, isn't it? It's all so clear about certain things when you look back and, you you know, you go, what what was I doing? Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm trying to stay in wrestling. Uh, we traveled to Boston. I live in upstate New York and Boston's two and a half, three hours um, so we traveled from upstate New York to Boston just to see The Rock at TD Garden um, before his match with John Cena at uh, WrestleMania 28 at that time. And I remember him at the TD Garden um, backstage or doing his backstage skits. And uh, he was doing stuff about you know making fun of John Cena's merchandise and throwing it in the river. And some of that was really, really funny. I, re- I remember some of the things... Um, that John Cena had an alarm clock and he takes the alarm clock and he's, uh, you know, he's like, ding, 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 time to get your ass whooped. I mean, some of this stuff, I mean, I don't know if that's planned or just well executed by Dwayne, but um, you can't deny John or you can't deny uh, the rocks entertainment value. His charisma is just through the roof and Obviously, in ring, this guy is uh, still got it, and I'm sure he could too. I'm sure in 2019 he could still have a match. When he said blatantly, clearly that as of you know this year that he's no longer going to be wrestling, and then he comes back for the Fox debut, and um, I think maybe he meant inside of an actual, maybe he meant in terms of an actual match inside the ring. I don't. I, I would think. I would think so because Vince McMahon's willing to write whatever. Uh, whatever, big, however big of a check that Dwayne needs in order to get him back into the ring, um, even if it's just for a you know a quick segment or a rock bottom or whatever. So I don't even know the next time we'll see The Rock. I mean, as WrestleManias go by, I still, while WrestleManias go by, I you know, I, I have that just constant muscle memory of oh, Stone Cold's going to be here, Rock's going to be here. I wonder what they're going to do, even though they're not announced. And I've kind of gotten away from that because I'm just being disappointed year after year of WrestleMania thinking that's going to be the case. But I'm fine with it because it's time to move on, I think, in, for a company to not lean on legends to sell WrestleManias and build new stars. Um, as much as I love seeing it, now, I was super disappointed in Orlando at WrestleMania 33 that neither The Rock or Austin were there. I was very um, not happy about that. Uh, but, again... WWE needs to move on and build stars and they can't just hang on legends as they do so often and have these reunion nights and anniversary shows and all this stuff that I totally understand why 
But at the same time, their main focus, their sole purpose in life needs to be to build new stars. Um, so, and, and, you know, we're seeing that right now with the NXT invasion that's gotten everyone's attention. Um, and as the Monday night or the Wednesday night wars continue, and they're continuing as I speak with Dynamite live right now and the NXT show live right now. Um, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. It's a great time to be a wrestling fan. And I don't know why we always need to segre- or s- fragment ourselves into only one camp. You can only choose one master. You either love AEW or you love NXT. Well, why? Why can't I like both? I don't know why I need to choose. And if I like one, I inherently can't like the other. There's that mentality out there. And people are you know, hashtagging, I'm with AEW or whatever. Like it's some kind of politically driven decision. That if I'm a Republican, I can't like Democrats. I mean, it's just this is a crazy world right now. I mean, I don't know why we can't just love both. I, I just don't because people frame this as a war. So if you're in a quote war, you can't be playing both sides. You have to pick a party. You can't just be neutral. And and that's not the case. It's not the case here. I don't know why we need to pick sides. I personally, I enjoy both. I don't have a lot of time to watch both. And I catch the highlights and, and things like that. And we have co-hosts covering that, which is why I'm not covering it. But um, so anyway, well, guys, I hope you enjoy the show. Don't, don't forget, tomorrow I'll be dropping two shows, AEW Review and NXT Review. I'm aware of the volume issue. I'm going to be fixing it. I know you said some of our co-hosts sound like they're whispering. I will up the um, volume for you so you don't have to worry about that. It should be resolved. Um, and then I'll be back Saturday and Sunday as I have a... Um, co-host from Patreon, who is coming on, Sean Harford, and then on Sunday, we'll be doing our typical week in review, so it's going to be a busy week, you guys have four more shows to go with uh, with a lot yet to be discussed and covered, so I hope you guys enjoyed the show, you know, uh, next week, I have already decided my wrestling nostalgia topic, which is going to be the Nexus, and the Nexus is invasion into um, WWE. I had uh, one of my other patrons who requested this, um, Ashley, and he asked me to put this in. And uh, so, hey, I like that topic. I don't know if I've really discussed the Nexus at any kind of length here. So the Nexus will be my topic next week. And a really interesting one, really interesting one. And I remember that whole deal and Daniel Bryan choking out Justin Roberts with a tie and getting suspended and Shawn Michaels brought him back and that whole debacle. Um, So there's a lot to come and a great topic for next week as I, you know, kind of spill the beans on that. But hey, I, I think you'll enjoy it. I think the Nexus is something that needs to be discussed as John Cena brought out the brilliant golden shovel and decided to bury every one of them one by one. So um, we're going to definitely dive into that as well. So alrighty, guys, well, don't forget, head on over to patreon.com slash WWE podcast. You can get yourself an ad free experience, totally new benefits. Just ch- give it a look. If you have questions, feel free to message me. You can get a, a video shout out. You can get a follow back on Twitter. Um, you can get a shout out on this show. You can come on this show even, depending on the tier you get. You can come on the show to be a co-host. And uh, we have that happening, as I said, again, on Saturday. So it, uh, it's going to be a cool deal. And check it out. And um, awesome. Well, I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I'll talk to you next time. <laughs>